uh, on the balance from Lake Bolac uh, in the high rainfall zone with over 525 mil rainfall. Uh, our farm is um, a mixed farm, sheep and cropping. Uh, we've got basalt type soil types down to a lighter sandy country. And yeah. Can you tell us about some of the productivity challenges and opportunities uh, down on your farm, here? Yeah? yeah, probably one that started off would be main one be waterlogging, uh, and uh, yeah, it's always the worst paddocks are water waterlogging related. We also have acidity, pH is low, very low sometimes, but and probably another one we're just finding more recently is potash deficiencies, uh, and they're all um, with. Uh, with good management, I think they're all um, able to be managed. And Neil, um, how did you decide that Precision Ag might be a way to help tackle these challenges? Yeah, uh, when we first started on auto steer, the, 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 the tractor's already doing elevation maps and um, talking to the PA consultants, they sort of were onto this and they sort of started looking through all that and all of a sudden even though we could sort of see it in the paddock they could see a really easy fix to it to the more basic stuff and um, as time's gone on with the improvement in earth moving equipment and all that um, it's about the harder stuff's become easier too with all the GPS equipment on um, drainage on graders excavators and all that and they can do grades in the paddock and and we're much more where where we can run water and do all that sort of stuff so it's actually um yeah that's probably how it all started and where we're at now yeah the yield response is always number one i suppose the most obvious one you see uh then uh yeah so we're seeing in, improved yields um we're probably finding our average yield over the whole farm is increasing. The bottom paddock always seems to drop you down significantly on, and we're, we're probably focusing on just um, improving our average yield as time moves on. And we're finding by, yeah, that's probably where, so that's where we're seeing it. But also the timeliness of operations by draining water, you can go out and, and also controlled traffic has helped a bit there too. Having our wheel tracks there is also helping more and more now with the weather conditions. We can get back on the paddocks, which makes it timeliness becomes an issue, which all helps with the yield, I suppose, at the end of the day. So, um, you'd have examples, I'd imagine, where in years gone by you'd have complete areas washed out that are now you're able to produce from. Is that the case? Uh, yeah, it's certainly the case. Uh, we've um, been up. Uh, yeah, um, we're probably not getting the maximum yield, but we're at least it's not a wipeout. I suppose is where we're we're improving gradually. It's not a quick fix overnight. Like over time, and as the soils improve, and um, yeah, so it's um, but yeah, it's definitely been improvement. Yeah. So Neil, what else have you been doing to help with? Um uh, ameliorating water logging. Yeah, we've well, just more recently we've been doing some um, deep ripping as well, or ripping down to about a two to three hundred mil, uh, and that's sort of helping um, with the crops too, giving us more time with before the country's waterlogged. You know, you know, the water just goes down away from the plant roots, it gives the plant a chance to establish. And in a lot of years, just more recently the paddock hasn't actually probably got that wet because the water's gone down away from the roots and it hasn't really affected the crop too much at all. So we're finding that sort of helping. Uh, a bit of gypsum is also in the last couple, two years, we've uh, done some of our own farm trials and uh, we're finding um, gypsum has been very good too with, in conjunction with the deep ripping. Some of our best responses have been two waterlogged countries being deep ripping and gypsum two and a half times. And you, you mentioned on the phone the other day that you've been using imagery to help um, try and see what's going on. Yeah actually it's probably become a key thing now with the imagery sort of pretty much free on a lot of um, the websites or whatever and um, so we've um, yeah it's, it does help a lot in terms of just 
biomass because poor biomass usually relates to, um, or not always, but some sort of waterlogging generally. You mentioned soil acidity and, and pH correction. Um, can you tell us about that journey, what you've been doing with variable rate? Yeah, so with pH, we started off in the early days, or well, it's a while ago now when it first came out, that we just tried a few paddocks to see how it went and um, whether there was anything in for it, because acidity is definitely a um, was, well, yield reducer for us. And um, so we've, yeah, um, we started off, probably haven't saved a lot of lime, but we've been able to target the areas that need it. And, now that we're sort of probably five, ten years down the track with it all, like we're finding the paddocks are evening up and we're sort of, we think uh, now we're, we're still finding some areas that need attention, but um, generally we're on pretty much a maintenance type um, thing and fine tuning it even more, I suppose, than what we were earlier, yeah. Okay, Neil, um, what extra costs did you incur to use Precision Ag to tackle some of these issues? Yeah, probably the uh, major cost being with the PA consultant that, who has been, um, who, like we, who has got the equipment and the ability to interpret the results for us. So that's, I think, I can't recall off the top of my head what the exact cost is, but that's been probably one of the major. With a lot of the equipment in the machinery, it's sort of already there. It's just a matter of ticking a box to open that up, uh, variable rate spreading, and that it's and, that, and like in terms of it's not that expensive per acre, I suppose. It's more about having the consultant and making sure you're targeting the uh, right areas to where you want to do your work. You know, so that yeah. Where you think you've got a response, so you've got a response, so. And has there been an increase? Well, in probably should have gone back to NDVI there, Kate, maybe, because yeah, that's, yeah, where no, have... of, yep. that's where we pick a lot of that um, sort of stuff up from that that's a poorer performing area, and so we'll go and find out why first, and then, you know, whether that's soil testing or whatever it need be. And um, yeah, so that's probably first thing we use is the NDVI image, so that's probably a pretty important tool in the whole PA process. And, and what other tools do you use, uh, Neil, to make it all happen? Uh, well, our own knowledge is pretty important in all this too. You sort of know what works and you're in and out of the paddocks all the time, so it's important. Uh, when all this technology came out 10 or 20 years ago, we were all novices at using that sort of equipment. Now I'm finding my son Charlie home, he's so much more familiar with computers, how all that technology works. And it's a lot easier for him to do all that sort of, um, and he can drives around the farm all day with his phone and he's got everything on his phone at his fingertips. Whereas I never have ever had that um, ability he can sort of say you can say to him something about what's there and he'll look up a soil test from you know he's, it's all this is the ability they got with their new phones and all this and um so yeah i've, I've found that quite um that's probably the biggest thing is i think is the yeah probably the younger generation are just much more tech savvy <laughs> and able to use the equipment better yeah, yeah and and the and the data handling um yeah. Ease of data handling yeah. with all the apps is is obviously uh, a lot mm. lot better now than than back yeah, in the day. Yeah, that's it. Certainly is. Yeah, it certainly is. And there's probably a lot more people in the industry that are able to provide support now too. Whereas that was probably lacking ten or twenty years. They're all like us. They're all learning, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So your PA team. You mentioned your PA consultant and. Obviously, yeah. Charlie and yourself. Does your agronomist have a role? Yeah, major role in all that. He's, um, yeah, no, the agronomist have a major role, and I think that's one thing we have seen a bit of a shift in the last few years is we're finding the agronomists doing more PA work than they were probably five years ago. They're, they're sort of embracing all that technology as well and picking up some really valuable information for us. So, yeah. Fantastic. And. Um, where next for the business in terms of capturing 
profit that's still on the table and does PA have a role in that? Well, I think, yeah, definitely PA's going to be uh, at the forefront of all that, I think. It's just uh, anything you can measure and monitor, I think it's got to be an advantage for your business. Uh, we, um, yeah, we're always monitoring cash flow and all those sorts of things, so it's great to be able to see what's happening in the paddocks as well, the imageries and um, everything's real time. It's becoming more real time all the time yeah, as time goes on. And, uh, so potash is probably one we'll look at. Uh, we just in the last year or two we've found more happening in that space and um, we got our variable rate spreading set up now for potash um, possibly uh, we're trying we're just this year's we're doing more zoning and just seeing what we can um, through and the, the zoning's been mainly done from NDVI imagery and we've got a few things happening there that we'll just see we've done soil testing more to uh, zones than grid sampling just blanket grid sample we're finding zones may i don't we this is we're just playing with it for the first time this year but already we're seeing a couple of things that we've never picked up with the grid sampling so uh, we'll watch this space and see where that goes so and and phosphorus what what are your plans with phosphorus? Yeah, phosphorus. Well, that's probably one of the ones that jumped out uh, with this zone sampling is the phosphorus. We sort of never really picked it up that well in the grid sampling, but with the zones, we've seen uh, some deficiencies showing up in some of the poor areas. So, or poor performing crops in the last couple of years. So, which is, I would never have thought that would be an issue, but anyway, it, it's, it's um, turned up. So, got to go with what the data says. So. Hmm. Uh, fantastic, Neil. And um, just in, in closing, any final words of wisdom for farm businesses that uh, may not be um, utilising some of the technology? Uh, well, yeah, I think um, it's having the people around you is a really important one there if you're going to have a go at the technology, I think. Uh, as farmers, it's very hard. I find it hard to be across everything, so it's great to have someone you can. Um, and I think there's a lot of those people around now. And the other thing is just start small and just work your way through it uh, so that you just get small results. Because um, over five years, small things over that five year we've found have been major at the end of that five years. So, yeah, it's one of the biggest things just pick away at it and try not to do everything in the first year, I suppose. Mm.